Good morning, everyone. So here we're going to begin with our uh, live presentation. So first of all, what I want to, to demonstrate to you today is how Optitex is a fully integrated 2D and 3D solution. Uh, one of the things that we want to specify here is that Optitex is a, a, a software company dedicated only to software, but we're able to connect to any type of hardware, for example, digitizers, different types of plotters, uh, or even cutting machines. All right. So first of the thing, one of the first things that we need to do when we're inputting the, the patterns into the system, there are various ways. Uh, one of the ways that we can do this is we can actually use, as I said before, we can connect to different types of hardware, such as a digitizer. So here we can actually, as you can see here on the, on the screen, I'm connected to a digitizing table. And then what the idea here is you can digitize the pattern into the system. So for example, if I was trying to do something about like a collar, uh, and then I want to create my grain line, and then I can apply that. And the system will create that pattern uh, within the system. Okay, so that's one way of creating our pattern. Another way that you can also do it, you can actually draft directly on, on screen. So for example, if you wanted to draft on screen, we can actually draft a complete pattern directly on screen. To create our, our pattern pieces. But the more, more standard way of working is, is that we can also um, import patterns from different uh, softwares. So for example, if we wanted to import, we have all the standard formats for importing. So if we wanted to import, for example, uh, DXF, uh, we have all formats, as I mentioned, DXF, AMA, ASTM. Uh, we also even have uh, Adobe Illustrator. So if, you're, um, if you have a, um, a vendor who wants to send you the patterns, we can import those patterns using these formats. Or if you'd like, what we can also do is we can actually have uh, direct converters. So from here, if we look at uh, the converters that we have. We have direct converters for the major uh, software, other software companies. So for example, if we wanted to import uh, through Gerber, we have our direct converter for Gerber, uh, for Lectra, and also for uh, Investronica, just to name a few. So for example, if we wanted to go ahead and import one from Gerber, so we just need to receive the file from the Gerber, a Gerber system, and then be able to import it. So as we can see here, we can see the model name, and I just have to, to define where I want the output. So here I can just say load, and then when we want to work with that particular file, we can open it into the system. And what's very good when you're working with the direct imports, we can have all the pattern pieces. And it also includes the SEAM allowances, which is very important. So here I will just change so that we can view it correctly. So we can see all the SEAM allowance is already uh, imported and along with the grading sizes. So if we wanted to see, for example, here all the grading table. So we save a lot of time here uh, when working. So we have the direct import to be able to import all sizes, SEAM allowances, and all details. Okay, so this is the first step when we want to work with our patterns uh, within uh, Optitex. So going from the 2D to 3D, uh, what we need to do from here is we also need to have what we call the avatar. So from here, as you can see, uh, I will just introduce you very quickly to the Optitex family. So as you can see here, within the Optitex solution, uh, we have included uh, different avatars. So as you can see, we have uh, for women, for men's, uh, for boys, uh, also for children. So you see here we have them all defined by name, and then also for uh, toddlers. Okay, you can use these avatars. These are parametric avatars, so they can be modified in any uh, to fit to your standards. Or what we can also do is we can actually even uh, use uh, Alvanon. We can import Alvanon avatars. So if you're used to using the hard form uh, mannequins, we can import those avatars and uh, do the simulation with those avatars. Or if you'd like, we can even uh, body scan. So uh, if you know of a company who can do the body scanning, we can import those body scans into the system and use those uh, avatars, okay? So let's see how we can modify uh, our parametric avatar. So as you can see here, we can see our avatar. We can see here in 3D. 
And uh, with the parametric avatar, we have over three, well, sorry, we have over a hundred different measurements. So as you can see here, they're divided by category. So you can see we have uh, the basic measurements. So they're all brought down by height, by uh, posture, or so for example, if we wanted to just uh, modify the average of the underbus, this is an interesting uh, modification. So we can modify the, the avatar uh, proportionally using just one measurement. And then after, we can use all the other, other measurements that coincide. So if you wanted to, for example, change, uh, for example, the posture of our avatar, we can actually just use our slider to change the, uh, the posture. Uh, you can change other details, for example, if we wanted to see the, um, the lengths. So as you can see here, we can look at the different lengths. So if we wanted to see, for example, the inseam, we can actually change the inseam for trousers. Uh, if you wanted also to change, for example, the circumference, so the standards, you have here the waist measurement, you have the, um, the hip measurement also, so you can change these values quite easily. Okay, uh, then you have further details. Uh, we can also go into more detail, for example, for regarding the poses. So if you wanted to change, for example, you wanted the arms up or down, or if you'd like to have the elbows bent, you can actually bend the elbows. If you would have liked, for example, another type of pose, you can also change the pose of our avatar. So if you wanted a more fashionable, fashionable pose, uh, we have different poses. Uh, later, if you wanted to also see, uh, for example, the walking pose or even a sprint, you can actually have our avatar if you're working in uh, athletic wear and you want to be able to see uh, the garment uh, in uh, motion, you can actually change that. Uh, and then you have some other further details. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to change the footwear, you can change the footwear for, uh, for elegant shoes, as you can see here. Uh, if we wanted to change the height, we can change the height. Uh, if you wanted to work with sneakers, you can change that also. So you have the different options of working uh, with your avatar. Then you also, if you work with, uh, for example, if you're making blazers or coats and you wanted to add the shoulder pads, you can actually add this information and then you can change the size of the shoulder pad, the edge of the shoulder pad, so you can do a lot of modifications to customize the shoulder pad. And then the other thing that's very interesting within the, the avatar, the parametric avatar, you can also create what we call presets. And presets, the value, the added value of working with this is that you can create in one file all of your sizes. Because normally what happens is, is when you're asking, actually, actually going to request for a sample, if you're going to make a sample, you normally only make the sample size. Whereas if you're working in 3D, you can actually change and create uh, and test for different sizes. So for example, here we have our size 8. Uh, but then if I wanted to, to create another preset, I can have my size 12. So that here we can have a different size model. Okay, Or if I wanted to have also my size 6. So here I can create the entire range of sizes, allowing me then to provide or supply or test the different sizes, sizes of my garments. Okay, so this is quite uh, useful for those companies who'd like to be able to test uh, not only just the sample size, but the more or less the smallest size to the largest size within their size range. Okay. Also, what we do have, uh, I don't have it here, but, um, I, what I have is a small little video just to show you also because we do have animation. We do have some uh, animation avatars. So this is one that's already completed. So as you can see, uh, we wanted to be able to test this dress uh, and we wanted to be able to see what it would look like when it's sitting. So what we'll see in, within this video is, uh, very quickly we'll see it, uh, the model will be sitting on the chair with this dress, but also with the tension map so that we can actually see the, the fit of the garment uh, when we want to be able to see the, the result when sitting. So as you can see here, there is the tension map so we can see that view. So we do include these types of parametric uh, or animated uh, avatars that are also included in the system. So you're able to test with your garments uh, these particular types of uh, motions or animations. Okay, so to continue further, now let's go into the part of once you have your pattern and then once you also have your avatar created, uh, the next step is basically to prepare the uh, 2D for the 3D. Okay, so to do that, uh, one of the things we need to define is uh, the, the placement of the, of the pattern pieces. So for example, here I've selected the front 
And then here what we need to do is we need to define the location within the 3D properties. So basically you just have to tell the system uh, what is the front, what is the back, what is the sleeve, what is a collar. So this here we already have a predefined list, drop down list. So the objective here is that you just have to tell the system uh, what is the location for each pattern piece. Okay. Once you've created the, the location for each pattern piece, then we also have what we call the fabric parameters. So here within Optitex, we have uh, an extensive library of different fabrics. So um, I think right now we have approximately up to 57 different fabrics. So it breaks it down between uh, knits, uh, wovens, and also some uh, other types of fabrics that are uh, like nylon or leather, uh, which are not the standard. So we also have included these types of fabrics. So as you can see here, we have the breakdown of different fabrics. Um, and actually, in this library is always going to be extending further. Uh, actually, I, I think in the next, uh, next version, we will have a, a larger library of fabrics, which will be very interesting to see. Um, but we also do have the possibility of creating our own fabrics. Um, the only thing is, is that what's important with regards to the fabric is not only the weight, because um, you see here, we can see the weight, we can see the thickness, and we can see um, the friction. What's also important within 3D is to understand what is the bending, basically what is the fall of the fabric, uh, or what is the stretch of the fabric, or the sheerness of the when, this, when pulling, no, on a 45 degree angle. So this information normally our suppliers or the fabric suppliers don't provide this type of information. But uh, what we need to do is we need to actually be able to use a, a fabric tester to be able to measure these values. So um, we actually do provide a service uh, within Optitex. If uh, you would like to send us your fabrics, we can actually test those fabrics and give you the values for this type of simulation. Um, and so we have that, uh, that, service that service, we can provide that service for you. Okay, um, so from there, once we've actually applied the, the fabric, the next step will be to create the uh, stitching. So from here, uh, in this design, we actually have it already prepared. So uh, if I wanted to be able to create the stitching, we just need to click onto the area. So for example, I need to define, okay, where, where on the sleeve will it go into the armhole? Uh, for example, the neckline of the collar, uh, the side seams. So we have here the side seams connected, uh, the part with the yoke, et cetera, et cetera. So we just need to be able to define these, uh, these uh, seam or C stitching to the, to the pattern, okay? So once we've defined, the, once we have the pattern, we've defined the uh, location, the fabric, and the stitching, we're now ready to simulate. So I will place the fabric onto my avatar. And here what's interesting is, is that you'll be able to see the location and all of the seams. So if we make a mistake, for example, if we made a mistake on a particular stitch, let's see if I just do it here just to show you very quickly. So I'm going to actually flip it and then we'll update it we'll be able to see beforehand, before actually doing the simulation, we'll be able to see if the stitch is correct or not. So as you can see here, we can see where the mistakes have, have been made. So as you can see, we have here uh, this value. So we'll just flip it back and then we'll refresh, refresh the window so that it updates um, the 3D uh, simulation, okay? So from here, what's interesting now, once we have it all prepared, we can now begin to simulate. So to simulate, we'll hit the play button, simulate draping. And while it's simulating, what's interesting is that we can still work in our 2D environment. So if I needed to make any additional changes or do any extra work uh, within the 2D environment, I can still continue working. Uh, one of the things that we might also want to see here, what we can activate while it's doing the simulation, we can activate the springs. And what this will allow, will allow us to be able to see how the garment is fitting onto the avatar. So if it's too loose or if it's too tight, we can actually see that complete simulation, okay? So this is giving us an added value. An additional thing that you can also see uh, are, for example, any darts or pleats. So for example, this, this garment has a dart on the side. So as we, if we zoom in, we can actually see where the dart placement is. So this is allowing us to view during the simulation, uh, being able to see where the placement is made, okay? So now, if I want, I can actually stop the, the simulation midway, okay? And then we can deactivate. 
the, uh, the springs. So now one of the things that we also like to do or what's necessary when creating within the 3D is to be able to, um, to see the fit or to be able to see the tension. So that's one of the things that we have included within the 3D with Optitex is called the tension map. And this will be able to allow us to be able to see how the fit of the garment is being applied with the fabrics that we're using, the type of fabric that we're using for this particular garment. So if I wanted to see the different tensions, let's say the standard that we normally use is the stretch X. So here, as we can see with the heat map, I can just leave my cursor on top of the, the fabric and it will be able to tell me on the right side what is the percentage. So between green and yellow and blue, this is a fairly um, a loose garment. Um, wherever we see in red, it might say that we might think that it's um, it's it's uh, incorrect, but we have to really consider that what it's basically telling us here is that in this area we're actually using the maximum stretch of the fabric. So in some cases it might be tight, but whereas this is a loose fitting garment, uh, we know that it's not too tight. So basically it's basically telling us here that this is the exact extension, the full extension or the full stretch of the fabric. Okay. Then from here, another thing that we can also do to check the fit of the garment, uh, we have some measurement tools within the 3D. So we can actually add what we call the circumf circumference measure. And this here is very interesting because we can then move the circumference measure along the avatar. And what it's going to do, it's actually going to show us the two values. These two values basically mean this is the measurement of my avatar and this is the measurement of my garment. So I'm actually able to uh, measure the garment while it's on the avatar. So as we're working virtually, it's very difficult for us to be able to calculate. So this is why the circumference measurement tool is very useful because we're able to actually uh, move it along the, uh, the garment and be able to measure and see what are the values. Okay. So from here, once we've seen the measurement, uh, what we can also do, which is quite nice within the 3D, is for example, if you wanted to be able to draw right onto the 3D garment. So we do have the tools to be able to draw, so I can do the 3D digitize. And let's say, for example, I wanted to just change a little bit the bottom of the, the dress. So what I can do is I can actually use my pen tool and begin to draw directly onto the 3D. So I can actually even still turn the garment and draw the curve. So once I say, okay, if I like this effect, I want to see what it's going to look like in the pattern, then what I can do is I can tell it to apply it to the 2D. And then as you can see here, it will actually add that line to the 2D pattern. So what I can do is I can just go here and I can say, okay, let's clear the lines. And now what the objective here is that now since I have those modifications here from the 3D to the 2D, I can then use the 2D software of Optitex to be able to modify this pattern. So I'm just going to minimize this for a minute and I'll show you how we can actually modify this bottom part of the pattern. So one of the things that we have to understand is that uh, Optitex is a fully integrated solution of 2D and 3D tools. So that means I can do my complete process of pattern, pattern drafting uh, from grading to also the simulation of 3D and even to the point of doing production. So if I needed to do production markers, I can actually do that also. So the objective here, um, we have, as I said, fully, integ fully integrated 2D tools. So for example, if I wanted to be able to modify the bottom of this pattern, I can use um, my what we call the move proportional and then I can actually move this pattern fully. So if I wanted to, for example, move it at a specific measurement, I can use this value here. I can say, okay, I want it to be three centimeters and we'll just move that. Then if I wanted to fix again from, let's say, from this point to this point, I still use the same tool and I will be able to modify my pattern in such a way. Okay. So that's why you have the, it's, it's very interesting how flexible the, the software is with these uh, automated tools, okay? So if we wanted to continue a little bit within the 2, 2D, uh, let's say for example, as you see here, I have a, a ruffle, a ruffle pattern. So for example, if we wanted to be able to see how can we create this ruffle? Normally in some cases, many people have to digitize the pattern in um, and be able to obtain this pattern. But whereas with an Optitex, as I said, it's a fully integrated 2D solution, so we can actually create a, a new piece using a specific tools. So I have a specific tool to create spirals. I won't go into details about how to create it, but basically what we need to know is the value, the measurement. So if I want to know the width of my pattern, so let's say, for example, it's two centimeters, and what is the length? And then the system will be able to create that pattern easily and quickly 
so that you do know you do not have to go in and digitize the pattern. You can actually create it within the within the system. Okay. Uh, another 2D uh, option that I think is quite interesting is also with regards to um, to grading. So we have the fully grading uh, grading tools within the system. So if I wanted to be able to see the grading of this pattern, so I will just go here to activate the grading. And as you can see, I have um, some parts of the pattern graded and some parts not. So uh, one of the things that I can do is I can actually grade these patterns all together. So we do have, again, fully integrated grading tools. So if I wanted to grade, so for example, I wanted to grade all of these patterns at once, what I could do is just make a window around the pattern pieces, and then I can say, okay, I only want my value of grading in X, and I apply it, and the system will then grade the entire pattern in the value of X. Uh, if I wanted to also do the bottom of the pattern, so for example, I wanted to lengthen this pattern and I wanted to only grade in the Y, I can say, okay, let's grade it uh, one centimeter only in Y, and it will also grade the pattern. So as you can see here, we can easily and quickly be able to create the grading for this pattern. Um, one other um, importance also within the grading is to create a measurement chart. Uh, one of the things that most uh, pattern, um, pattern developers need to create when creating the pattern is the measurement chart. So again, within, uh, within Optitex, we do have the possibility of creating our own measurement charts. So this information is quite easy to create. And as we can see here, I have this measurement chart within this pattern. So whatever line I select, as you can see here, I'll just deactivate the grading so you can see, we can see that this is measuring the front length. Uh, here, if we have the sleeve length, it's going to measure the sleeve and including the cuff. So uh, let's say, for example, I decided I wanted to make a change in the grading of the hip in one size. So what you can actually do, it's quite simple, we'll just go in and click on the, on the size and I can say, okay, what is the value that I want to change it to? Um, so we'll say, okay, for the hip, I want to make it uh, 118. This is the full circumference because we've given not only half, but the full circumference of the, of the measurement. And then here, the system will then change also, we might not be able to see it very well, but it will also change the size of the pattern uh, within the grading. So if I were to select the grading, the grading option here, we'll see a difference within the large size. As you can see here, it's increased it by 0 0.78 on both sides, okay? So this is very useful and very time savings because then with regards to creating grading, uh, the integrated tools that we have available, it's very, very, very useful. And then from here, once we have the measurement chart, if I wanted to, I want to be able to communicate this information to either internally or externally. What you can do is you can actually even export, uh, export it to Excel. So that means that you can generate an Excel file. And in this Excel file, if you wanted to later uh, share it with your PLM system or your ERP system, you can actually create it within this uh, Excel file. I do actually have it already prepared just to show you. So it's, these are the values that it's creating with the uh, measurement chart. So everything is taken from, uh, from Optitex. So it's taken from the pattern. So whatever changes you make to the pattern, it will automatically update the, um, the measurement chart. So for example, if I decided to just uh, make a quick change, let's say uh, we wanted to make a quick change in the length, just to make it very quick. And we wanted to make it, for example, uh, I'll make it four centimeters longer. The objective here is that when we see the front length, it will also change the value. So currently, let's say, for example, it's 86, 86 centimeters. But I made it shorter, sorry, so it's 82. So as you can see here, the measurement chart is also being updated at the same time. So this is very useful um, for the pattern development team or the technical team, so they don't have to worry about remeasuring. It's already updated within, within the system. Okay, so then from here, um, so this is a little bit about what we can do within the 2D. There are many, many other tools, um, but I just wanted to give you a, a global view of what we can, can create within, uh, within the 2D, the 2D um, environment, okay? So now, since I've made some changes to my, uh, my garment, so for example, if I wanted to be able to add uh, the ruffle also, I want to be able to see this ruffle, I can actually tell the system, okay, in our first simulation we didn't have it, but I want to add it now. And then, for example, I want to maybe later add, um, I have some, um, some pattern tool or pattern, pattern pieces here for a belt. I want to be able to add that. 
So what I could do, because since as you can see in this, uh, in this dress, it's very loose fitting. So I want to be able to change, uh, for example, maybe in the waist, because we want to have some gathering. So what I can do is I can actually tell the system to shrink it to make some gathering. So later on I can add the belt. Um, so let's say, for example, 45, 45%. And then from here, what we'll do is we'll refresh. And I want to be able to simulate the, um, the belt after. So we'll first simulate the garment with the frill. As you can see here, we have the frill here. And then now, once it's going to simulate, it's actually going to give me the gathering. So you'll be able to see the gathering here in the back. We wanted to see a little bit better with the mesh. Sometimes it's easier this way so that we could see it. Okay. And then while it's working, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... Let me just fix it here. Sorry. working within the 2D into the 3D space or if you wanted from the 3D space to the 2D so it's very interactive in that way so once it's finished I'll just stop it here the springs gathering all right now I want to be able to add my belt so I'm going to add it in the second phase so I'm going to say okay let's update it and now what the system will do, it will add the pieces for the belt. And then we'll be able to simulate the belt also included into this garment. Okay, so we can see here. Actually, see, I will explain to you in a minute about the belt buckle. Okay, because what's interesting is that you can actually work with some uh, what we call rigid parts or trims. The trims are including all the buttons, uh, belts, and et cetera, et cetera. So I'll explain that to you in a moment. But I want to be able to simulate this. So then we're going to just simulate the belt. so that it closes. And here now the system has fully simulated my garment with the belt and the frill. Okay? So now if I want to remove actually here we're looking at it in unique colors so you see we see each pattern piece is one color. I will deactivate this and we can now see it in one color. Okay? Um, but the idea here is that now once we've created it with the belt and with the frill and all the details, I want to go to the next step, which would be to, to present it in different colorways, with different fabrics, or even with different, different um, trims. So for example, as I mentioned before, let's say here, what we'll do is we'll go into what we call our shader manager, and this is where we control all the colorways. So for example, I already have some colorways created, but if I wanted to, what I can do is I can create a completely new one. And what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll actually create uh, with color. So what you can do is you can actually import, uh, if you're using uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, you can actually import your color palettes from Photoshop or Illustrator. Or if you'd like, you can actually even integrate the Pantone library. So the Pantone library from Fashion and Home, the TCX or TPG uh, color palettes, you can actually uh, work with those palettes. So we can actually open them up completely here within the system. Or we can use what we have, let's say, for example, our standard palette, okay? And then here now, if I wanted to change the color, I can actually change the color. As you can see, it changes the color of all of the dress. Uh, if I wanted to change for the stitching, I, I can actually use another color for the stitching. So as you can see, all the details, we can actually go in and, and change. And if I wanted to change the detail for the buttons uh, and all of the, the um the uh, rigid parts, we can actually do that too. So as you can see here, we can change that. So one of the things that I had mentioned before was with regards to the buckle. So for example, if you wanted to be able to change it uh, within the system, we have actually a library of uh, rigid parts. Well, we call them rigid parts, but you can call them trims. Um, so you can actually work with uh, the complete library, or you can actually add in additional uh, rigid parts or trims. So for example, if I wanted to use uh, a bow, as you can see here, we can change that to a bow, or we can change it to, uh, for example, uh, another buckle or a crystal. Um, you have all the details here, all the different types of uh, information that you can use, 
or trims that you can use for this particular uh, particular design. Okay. So it's not limited to just what will we have. We can include further. Uh, if you have a 3D uh, designer or if you know of a graphic designer who can, uh, can create these types of uh, rigid parts, you can have that within, uh, within the system. Okay. So from here, uh, we'll come back to the other variant, co variant colorways that we have. So for example, we've just created one of in, a, in a solid color, but you can actually bring in um, with prints. You can actually work with your print designs. So for example, as you can see here, we have one, let's say, with an actual print. So if you do do print design, we can actually import those files into the system uh, as JPG, PNG, BMP, or TIFF. Uh, we can work with those formats. Um, so as you can see here, we can work with uh, the blue stripe or even uh, another type of graphic print uh, within, the, within the system. Okay, so uh, let's say for example, now um, within this fabric, if we wanted to change the scale, we can actually change it um, different ways. We can actually use the scale, this, we can actually move it, sorry, move the fabric, or we can change the scale of it within the 3D system if we'd like. Or if you'd like, you can actually do it within the system here, within the 2D environment, we can actually activate the fabric and we can see the patterns filled with fabric. So let's say we'll work with the front. And if we wanted to, for example, just move the texture, uh, we can actually move it. See here. We want to move the texture. So we can go ahead and move this texture, or we can actually change the, the positioning or um, within the 2D environment. Okay, so you can either work in the 2D to 3D or 3D to 2D. Okay. Another thing that's interesting too within the system is that you can actually even uh, import, uh, let's say for example, other types of details. Let's say for example, if you wanted to add an embroidery. So for example, if we wanted this embroidery here in our garment, as you can see, it's right here is where it's located. Uh, we can actually move it uh, uh, further down if we needed to. Let's see here. If we wanted to move it. We can actually move it within the, the 2D space. Okay. Oops. Say the offset here. We'll put it at, uh, we can even change the value of the offset here. So we can say, okay, we want it maybe at uh, 20 and here in X or in Y, sorry, minus 10. Okay. And then we can actually go in and we can actually move move the, the embroidery, okay? If you wanted, for example, you only wanted it in one side, you can say, okay, the location I only want it on the left side, the system will only allow it on the left side. Or if you wanted it, for example, you want it on both, but you want a mirroring, we can actually do a mirroring effect within the, within the, the 2D, uh, within the, the embroidery with it for the 3D, okay? So you can actually see those different types of, um, those different types of uh, simulations uh, within the, within the 2D space and 3D or 3D into 2D, okay? So from here, after that, once we have this information already prepared, we have the, the, all the design and everything uh, with the fabrics, we can go a step further and actually apply what we call uh, textures or actually see the, the rendering in a higher quality. So uh, right now we're at the first level of rendering. So for, for example, if I wanted to be able to see this in a higher level of rendering, we do have a high quality rendering. And we can now see this information uh, after uh, within, the, um, within the simulation. So we can see the high quality rendering, okay? And then the idea here, after the high quality rendering, we would like to be able to communicate this information uh, in different ways. So, for example, if I wanted to be able to send this information to um, to my vendors or to, for example, to my design team, uh, we want to be able to communicate that information. So what we'd like to do is we like to be able to use what we call our O cloud. Our O cloud, we can do it in two different ways. So one way we can use what we call the collaborate tool. Uh, so what this allows is that we're allowed to take from the 2D space. Uh, we can actually, the 2D and 3D, we're actually able to share that information. I will save this. Uh, we're actually able to share the 3D information 
and 2D information on the cloud. So basically doing it through PDS, what you can do is you can follow through a step-by-step, -step, um, basically telling you, okay, if I had uh, different uh, brands or different labels, uh, where do I want to apply or where do I want to put my information? So for example, I'm going to put it here in the text process corner and then I'll just say next. So we just basically follow the wizard, the wizard information. So then here it's going to say, okay, in what workspace do you want to put it in? So for example, if I have my dress collection, I can add it here. Then I can choose a folder, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, we can, what's interesting here is the system will be able to uh, give you a uh, history. So basically it's giving you, let's say for example, the revision one, revision two, each time we make a change and we upload again, the system will keep a history. So we have um, a complete history of what's going on with the, the changes within the garment. And then we can then share it with different people. So for example, if I wanted to send, share it with my buyers or with my other design team or with the development team or even with my vendors, uh, we can actually create a list and send that information um, or share that information uh, externally. So uh, this information is interesting because um, I won't finish it here. We'll go directly to the Collaborate. We'll go to the Cloud. So as you see here, I'm now online and I want to be able to go to Collaborate. And I will be able to open up the same process that we saw before. So I'm going, let's say, from the company, the dress collection. And then in here, we can actually see the, the dress. And then what you can actually do is you can actually up, uh, upload many information, a lot of information. So for example, if you wanted to upload uh, the measurement table, the measurement table that I just showed you, you can actually upload this measurement table to the, to the collection. You can also upload your fabrics. So if you wanted to upload the prints, you can actually do the same. And even for the woven, you can do the same. So any details that you want to, to be able to share, uh, both internally or externally, you can upload that information here. And then the most important is the PDS file. So what we've done is we've uploaded the PDS file. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to see the garment in 3D. Uh, and this is what's interesting is, is that once you're on the cloud, you do not have to have PDS. You can now view the 3D simulation anywhere. So you could be working uh, in-house or if you're traveling or if you're in a different country, we can actually be able to see the garment in a 3D simulation. Okay, so basically what we saw in PDS, we're actually able to uh, send that information to the cloud and be able to communicate. So what's interesting about it here within the within the Collaborate is that you can actually create a dialogue. So basically, if I'm going to be sending this, for example, in one direction to my vendor, uh, what I can do is I can actually send him all the information. So I can write down all the information I need. So for example, the belt is a synthetic. So as you see here, we can see the texture, which came from PDS. Uh, we can see the texture of the, of the, of the snake skin, since it's a synthetic one. Um, if I wanted to say, okay, this is a 2 centimeter, uh, 2.5 centimeter hem, uh, the ruffle has a, a contrasting color. So basically what this is doing, it's giving a guide to the garment. So we can go throughout the 3D garment and be able to see that information. So how we did that, we basically used all the tools that we have here. So we're actually able to see the garment uh, in different perspectives. So if you wanted to add a particular comment, you would just basically zoom into the area that you want to be able to apply, and then you would just add a pin, and then you would just add your, your comment. No, so if you wanted to say, okay, these are buttons. So it's quite simple and easy to, to maneuver and to be able to communicate. So then this is what one way of doing it uh, through, let's say if I had PDS and I wanted to be able to send it to my vendor, or we could do it the opposite way. We can actually have the vendor send it to us and we can add our comments to say, okay, we need this to be shortened. Uh, we want to use a different color of a stitching. So this is a complete streamlined communication um, with, within different teams. So this is the objective here within, uh, within the, collaborate, uh, the Collaborate solution. Okay, so from here, after that, 
what you can also do uh, with your um, high resolution garments, uh, we can actually even create in the cloud what we call the digital collection. So within the digital collection, what you can do is you can actually upload those high quality uh, simulations and create the collection that you want to be able to share again internally with your teams or if you want to be able to share it with customers or buyers, you can actually um, share that information. So as you can see here, we have a complete collection. But you do have some filters. So, for example, if we wanted to see the menswear collection, we can just say here, okay, let's identify the menswear. If I wanted to see uh, the, the kids wear also, so we can actually activate this one. And you see here, we'll only show the kids wear. And if I wanted to see a particular garment in higher resolution, we can actually see, for example, this dress with all its details. We can actually press play, and we're able to see the 360 degree. So this all this information is, again, coming from PDS. And if I wanted to zoom in and to see the details, I can actually zoom in and I can actually look at all of the details within this particular dress. And I can see, for example, as we're seeing the pom-poms and we wanted to see all the details of the tie in the back. So we're looking at it at a very high quality um, simulation of uh, rendering. Okay. So if I wanted to continue with my particular dress too, we also have the dress here. So we can actually take this off and we actually can have uploaded the dress. So again, you can see the same thing. You can have all the information uh, within this particular garment and have all the colorways uploaded so that you're able to see it in a 360-degree uh, simulation. Okay? So from here, once we've actually applied all of this information from PDS to the high quality of uh, simulation and within our cloud solution, what you can also do is we can actually take our 3D simulation and if you wanted to bring it into, say for example, um, Adobe Illustrator. So the idea here when working in Adobe Illustrator is that we can actually take the 3D simulation and be able to test it uh, within a 2D pattern. So once it's loaded, we'll be able to see how we'll be able to simulate these types of, uh, these types of garments. Okay, just going to close some windows here. In the meantime, while it's loading. Okay. So, so we're now inside Adobe Illustrator. And what I could do is I can activate the Optitex. It's called Optitex 3D Design Illustrator. And now I have the same dress. So we'll look at the shirt, uh, ruffle shirt dress. I have the same dress, and what we're going to do is we're going to have a viewer here of the 3D simulation, and we also have our 2D pattern. So this is great because we're actually working in real size. So that means that the pattern that we're going to be working with, whatever I decide to add to the, the 2D pattern, I'll be able to simulate it in real size. So as you can see here, we have it. Okay. We have the full rendering. So now what I can do is I can actually use any of the tools of Adobe Illustrator, my paint tools, my clipping mask, any of the things that you like to use or what you normally use within uh, uh, Adobe Illustrator, you can do. So let's say, for example, I wanted to use a brush. So I have here a few brushes. So I'm going to use actually this design brush that I have, and I'm going to brush, uh, I'm going to add it at a specific size. So for example, I wanted to add this detail here. Uh, maybe I want to add it. Um, apologies for my artistic tools. <laughs> I'm not uh, that uh, fluid here in the artistic area, but the idea is that you're able to see the simulation. So for example, if I also want to add it, I want to add it to the belt. So now the idea is I've made my changes and then I can actually update it and be able to simulate it here uh, within, uh, within Illustrator, but I'm actually able to see the, the simulation from Illustrator into a 3D space. So this is giving you unlimited possibilities when wanting to be able to see those simulations. So as you can see here, we can actually see that uh, that simulation has been done within the complete, uh, the complete garment, okay? Or if you'd like, what you can also do is you can actually use your uh, fabrics. So if you use the swatch, uh, the swatch library, so for example, here I have some swatches, and then what I could do is I can actually select all of my pattern pieces, and then I can actually fill it with a swatch, and then just update it. So now, again, this is giving you full advantage of seeing what your print design would look like on an actual garment. 
so in a 3D space. So this is really an added tool for all designers, graphic designers, who are wanting to be able to test or visualize their simulation. So as you can see here, for example, this is one size, but if I wanted to make it a little bit smaller because I feel it's too big, what I can actually do is I can actually scale it down. So I will say, okay, I want to scale it down maybe to uh, 50%, okay? And I'll say, okay, and then we'll just update it. So that gives the, the graphic designer or textile designer the flexibility to test or view or even to input if you wanted to put uh, logos or graphics, you can actually test that sizing of those graphics uh, within, the, within Illustrator. So that's the nice thing is that you're not leaving your, your design space, you're still working in Illustrator um, and being able to simulate in 3D your uh, particular type of uh, simulation. Then from here, what you can also do for the, 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 the 2D is that this can actually be uh, printed out. So if you have, uh, for example, you want to be able to send it to a uh, digital printer, um, we can actually send it to the digital printers because this is a, a real size uh, pattern. So you can actually have it for digital printing. If you do sublimation printing or heat press printing or even fabric printing, you can actually send this, these files, this Illustrator file to be printed. Okay, and then on a final note, uh, we also have another solution which is called 3D Review, and what I like to call this is like the, the virtual uh, storyboard or the 3D storyboard. So basically what you can do is you can actually use the 3D Review to be able to visualize all of your colorways in one window. So this is one way. So for example, as you can see here, or we're still looking at the dress, so we can actually see the front and back of all three simulations. So we are actually able to use this um, to be able to work with our design teams to be able to say, okay, what colorway we like, what colorway we don't like, uh, what can we do to change it? So you can actually do it within the, within the system. So this is quite interesting. But you can also use this uh, other way, another way is by using it, for example, to do revisions of a particular garment. So, for example, if you wanted to be able to see uh, the changes that you've made, for example, if we've done it, let's say we've done one dress, um, a shorter uh, or straight length uh, dress, and then we want to see what it looks like in A-line, and we want to be able to compare, what you can actually do here is you're actually able to, to see those simulations the 3D simulations and be able to analyze to see whether you like it in which, uh, which way do you like it. Do you like it in a straight or an A-line? Or you can actually use it in another way to be able to review your size sets. So for example, if I'm doing a particular garment in a different size, I want to be able to see it in all sizes or in a particular size range. What you can also do is you can actually use the 3D review and to be able to visualize these garments in different sizes. So as you see here, we can see what it looks like in small or in extra large. Also, another way I like to use this, um, this software is to be able to look at it as a, as a collection. So for example, um, because we have to remember that the 3D that we have from Optitex doesn't just do for apparel. You can actually do for all kinds of soft goods. So for example, if you wanted to be able to do uh, bags, hats, uh, any type of uh, particular type of accessory, you can actually do it in the 3D and be able to, to simulate. So here in this particular example that I'll show you in a minute, we're actually able to look at an entire collection. So for example, if I have uh, one particular garment uh, or uh, a garment or um, an outfit, and I want to be able to see that complete outfit, uh, and then I want to be able to see it with other accessories, we can actually use the 3D review as like a 3D storyboard. So what you're able to do is you're actually able to see this complete garment what it would look like all together, and then the accessories that I might be working on for this particular collection. So it really helps you to be able to, to view the collection in its full aspect. Not only just looking at it as a flat sketch, you can actually look at all of the accessories and be able to choose what colors, what combinations you like. So I think it's quite, a, quite interesting at the level that you can, you can achieve with working with the 3D uh, review.